Hey, we have here on the board another interesting integral from the MIT integration B 2016. This was problem number seven. We have the integral from 27 to minus 27, sine inverse x to the one third over three dx. Okay, the thing that jumps out to me right away is this situation where whenever I see the top bound is the, we have the negative of the top bound on the bottom. I'm always thinking about odd functions because if this is an odd function, this is going to be equal to zero. This property we have here on the board is, can be really helpful on a contest problem like this because not only does it give you the answer, but you get the answer in like two seconds. You don't have to spend time on this problem because you can look at it and you know right away it's gonna be zero. But what you need to validate is the bounds or the, you, you get the bounds, so it's you get the negative of the top bound on the bottom. And then this function has to be an odd function and then as far as evaluating that this is an odd function quickly, we know a cube root is an odd function. And you can kind of think about like if you get the cube root of minus eight, you get out minus two. And the other thing to know, we know that sine is an odd function, but what happens is the inverse of an odd function is also an odd function. And so we have the composition of an odd function with an odd function, which is itself an odd function and hence zero. But one thing I want to do just so that this isn't like a 20 second video is show that inverse sine is an odd function. So we start with our function, which is going to be arc sine or inverse sine, and we just want to evaluate it at minus x. So we want to look at inverse sine at minus x, and what I'm going to do is set this equal to y. And then we can just use the property of the inverse, and we can say that minus x equals sine of y. But then we can multiply minus 1 on both sides, and we're going to have x equals minus sine y, but knowing that sine is an odd function, we can write it, we can bring it inside the function and write it as sine of minus y, but then we can use the property of the inverse again and put it back like this and say sine inverse of x equals minus y, and then again multiplying by minus one we get y equals minus sine inverse of x, but this here is our function so we're just back to minus f of x. And so that tells us that this is odd, and as we said earlier, the inner function's odd, so the whole thing's odd, and this is going to be zero. That's MIT 2016, problem number seven. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a good day.